<laughs> Where was the countdown? <laughs> there was no countdown. I thought there was going to be a countdown. I thought there was going to be a countdown. Well, you're live anyway. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Happy Saturday. Uh, thank you for joining us. We are going to quickly do a tech check. Before we get started here, so as long as you can hear us and see us relatively okay, that's all we ask for. Um, just let us know in the chat if you can, uh, if, if we're, we're coming through somewhat clearly <laughs> while I get my mouth around my words. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't said a whole lot yet today, so I, uh, I, will, be, I will be more, more verbally trip, tripped up than normal, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm waiting to see. <clears throat> Let's see here. Viking Don Juan says, <laughs> see and hear. Great. Sakura Sue. Hello, hey, Sue. clear over here. Summer says, sounds good. Oh, hi, Summer. A bit blurrier than normal. Okay. Oh, poop. Well, what can we do? Yeah, it's... Good morning, everyone. Um, okay, so we're coming through. If you... Maybe it'll um, maybe it'll clear up. It might bit. clear up a little bit. Yeah, just because it just got started. So. Hopefully. Um, and sometimes we notice when you when you get into a live stream. We were watching a live stream earlier today, actually, before we started up our own. Um, and there, it was a little cloudy for about a couple minutes, and then it kind of cleared up. So it's almost like the stream has to connect with your home device and like sort of level itself out. So um, we found that that kind of worked out. Uh, so hopefully that happens with this one. All right. So today, since Halloween's up uh, in about a week and a half. I think we're, we're about a week and a half out getting from Halloween. Close. Getting close. Uh, we thought we had to do a live stream and to do sort of a little um, spotlight on some costume making, some fun, simple, quick costume making. And we thought we would go with ear warmers this year. We've made a lot of different ear warmer tutorials on the show. So we've got several that we can point you in the direction of if you want to see like a better close up um, a tutorial of how to make a really basic ear warmer. Uh, in particular, we've got one for uh, cat ears. We've got a cat ear head warmer pattern. We've got a creeper ear warmer pattern. Um, we've got some fancier ear warmer patterns, but we're just going to stick with the plain old band that goes around your head today. Uh, we're going to give you some ideas on how to make them faster or, you know, warmer, depending on what you feel you need. Um, and of course, we can show you how to make it for the kids. So if this is something you want to make for the kids or yourself or a friend or something, this is the easiest way to make an ear warmer. And then we're going to put something on it. We're either going to put ears on it or horns on it or antlers or I don't know, something. We will we will uh, take a poll a little later and decide what we're going to do. Um, and I grabbed some yarn from the stash. I didn't I didn't really um, didn't work. I didn't I, I, I kind of just it was almost like a blind stash grab. <laughs> I was thinking animal colors. So I've got some brown, I have some gray, I've got various shades of cream and white. And I also have this, um, this super saver that I never got into. It's kind of off white and it has flecks of other color in it, like some dark brown, some light browns, maybe a little bit of bluey gray. Uh, so I don't know, I thought maybe we'd pick one of those to make the head, sort of the headband out of. Um, and that's kind of what we thought we would do. It's kind of fun. I mean, like it's it's gotten really cold here a lot quicker than we kind of anticipated. I heard from some folks in Wisconsin that you'd already had snow actually land and like you know stare back at you <laughs> before it got warm again. We we had a little bit of snow overnight uh, last week. I think it was last week. Um, and we had some hail and we had some freezing rain just briefly. So it it got colder here a little earlier than expected. October is famous for having wild weather where we are, but um, I don't know. I feel like it just kind of genuine, generally got chillier faster. So I thought ear warmers might be a good idea for a lot of us if we're going to be out roaming around, roaming the streets on uh, the 31st of October or if the kids are. So um, you don't need anything super fancy for this project. You can use any yarn you have um, as long as it feels nice. So you want to use a, a yarn that isn't like itchy or scratchy because it's designed technically to be a wearable. I'm just using acrylic. That's my favorite thing, <laughs> Mr. Stitches. Well, first of all, um, I'm trying to decide what to read out first. Oh. <laughs> um, you're getting a lot of compliments on your hair. Oh my gosh, my hair. And Hi. I think you should tell everyone the hair story since you're getting all these compliments. Okay, all right. I but will tell everyone. But before you tell the hair story, 
I will. Um, a big, uh, a big re welcome and shout out to Jamie, who's been one of our channel members for 34 months. Thank you, Jamie. And Tori, hey, uh, Tori. 26 months. <laughs> Tori says, Two back surgeries since I saw you last. I made it. You made it. Good. Wow. We're glad you're here. Thank goodness. Wow. 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 Glad you're home. Glad you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So in regards to the hair, oh, Robin yes. says, love your long hair. Thank you. And <laughs> someone else asked if Mama and Stitches cut it. No. And uh, <laughs> Joanna says, love your haircut, Jada. Thank you. <laughs> so you're getting a lot more compliments than expected. Yeah, I am. I'm, and I'm actually, thank you very much, guys. That makes me feel good because... <laughs> Uh, Mr. Stitches and I are kind of in the habit of giving each other, you know, trims and haircuts uh, because of the whole pandemic when everything was closed. So we're still in the habit of doing that. You know, if he needs his hair trimmed, I'll just sort of bring out the, the razor and give him a little buzz cut. And he's really good at typically just trimming the ends off my hair. Well, my hair reached to the middle of my back earlier this week. <laughs> Some of you will recall I've had quite long hair for a while. But it's, I have very, very thin hair and I'm losing more and more of it every day. Um, and it's thinning everywhere. So I'm not, I mean, I was fully expected that. All the women in my family have really thin hair. It's baby fine. It doesn't grow very well. And when it does grow, it kind of like kicks out all the other hairs ahead of it. So, so the fact that it got to the middle of my back, the longest pieces with the middle of my back was actually, you know, kind of, kind of a, a point of pride for me, but it's not even like it doesn't all. So I, anyway, I said to Mr. and Stitches, I need a trim. Can you figure out where it like starts to thicken back up again and, and cut it off there? So it combs it all down the middle of my back. It's like, well, here's where it stops, pokes me in the middle of the back. And then he combs it again and goes, well, here's where it seems to thicken up. And that was about my shoulder blades. Okay. My shoulder blades, the bottom of my shoulder blades, maybe about the middle of. And I said, okay, cut it there. And I start seeing him like, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And, and well, I don't know. I'm working my art. I, I, well, you know what? Oh, it's a little uneven. Let me even it up. So, a little uneven, let me even it up later. A little uneven, let there me even it up. There was at least five of those. <laughs> it now comes to just below my chin. So, <laughs> here we are. Anyway, I, I, it's cute. He did a, Mr. Stitches does a fine job cutting hair, and it does feel a lot thicker and bouncier again. That's nice to get all that stuff off of it, but it's a lot more hair removed than I anticipated. <laughs> so it's hair. It's about five to six inches. Yeah. More than anticipated. But but I do I do like the little flip the view that it does. So so that that's I like it. it. Yeah. We'll get uh we'll get mama to fix it in the future. I have to admit everyone typically I like my hair Clean, really tidy it up a bit. Really short. Mr. and Stitches likes my hair long. I like it short, short as possible. I my favorite haircut of all time has been a pixie cut. Nice I cut. do not like to deal with hair. I don't like it in my face. I don't like having to put it up. I don't I don't like it. I just like it, you know, like out of the way and, and cute, but out of the way. So I would, if, if I, if I could cut my own hair and actually do a good job of it, I would wear a pixie cut all the time. Uh, but you know, this is okay. This is as long as I can put it back in a ponytail still. Well, you're getting again. compliments. So well, thanks everyone. I'm going to take that as a win. <laughs> it's a win for the mister. <laughs> Oh, okay. So um, I was going to say for this little project, you can obviously, I assume you're probably sitting there with a work in progress of your own, but if you were going to make one of these hair bands along with me, or you kind of got some ideas or you're last minute wondering what to, to put on the kids, um, this might help give you a little bit of guidance. Costuming is a big part of my history. I love designing costumes. I love, I did a lot of costuming for theater companies and I, um, I love the concept behind costuming. So you don't have to be super detailed, super accurate. You don't need to be complicated with your costumes to just get across the idea of something. So especially this is helpful when you're dressing up little kids because over the course of the evening of Halloween, they will shed pieces of their costumes. Anything that is, that is awkward or heavy or itchy or cumbersome, it's the first thing to come off. So I like to design costume pieces that are kind of integral to a, a regular wardrobe. And an ear warmer is something that a lot of children are comfortable wearing anyway. And if it's sort of a neat color or it's sort of an animal color or it's got, you know, ears or something, then it helps give across the idea that they are in a particular kind of costume. So even if you dress like if you were going for like a, a cat costume, you could put somebody all in black 
and then give them a little black ear warmer with little black ears. We have a tutorial for, for cat ear warmers and a matching tutorial for the cat paw fingerless gloves too. Um, you can do that and then poof, you already have like a cat costume and it's it's warm, it's cozy. You can wear it all evening and keep your ears warm and it won't be uncomfortable. And it's, it's a good option for younger kids especially. And it's a good option for those of us who are sort of just out chaperoning. <laughs> want to look like we're in the spirit, but don't want to wear an entire costume. Um, so you can use any yarn that is nice and comfortable to wear. So uh, nice acrylics, cottons, wool, wool blends, as long as it's not an itchy thing or nobody has a problem with wool. Um, any yarn that you like that feels nice and comfortable that is a good color for the project you want to make. So if you're making an animal headband, think browns and grays and auburns and maybe whites and creams and it just sort of depends on the animal you're going for but you know there's a lot of color variation in the animal kingdom um so you can pick a color that maybe you've got a lot of in the stash and sort of go with that um i i'm not sure which one i'm going to use today i don't know if i'm going to go with white or brown i haven't decided on the animal yet um but you can also use whatever hook you're comfortable with so if you're using a size four medium weight yarn you can get away with a five millimeter, which is a, an H or an eight, uh, a five and a half, that's a, an I or a nine, or a six, that's a, a J. So anywhere in that ballpark, um, whatever's comfortable for you and your tension, or maybe the, the kind of the weight yarn, because you know how yarn weight categories vary. Um, if you're using a size five, which is a chunky bulky, just kind of go up a little bit from there. Start with a six, maybe a six and a half millimeter, um, that's a J or a K. Um, you know, whatever feels comfortable with the yarn. There's no real rules here and there's no real tension or, or gauge that you have to worry about because when we're making a super basic headband, you're basically just chaining a foundation row that fits snugly around the head. So around the back of the head, over the ears, and those two end chains need to meet sort of snugly over the forehead. Um, if, you're, if you've got the little one handy, you can sort of keep trying it on their head, or if they wanna be off doing something, just measure their head with your measuring tape. I've got my measuring tape here. Looks like this. Take your measuring tape, round the back, over the ears, and right at the forehead. And that's the circumference measurement. For me, that's 22 inches. That's the measurement um, that you wanna aim for. So your foundation chain row, when stretched, not tightly, but stretched, equals that circumference measurement. That way you can sort of take one measurement and let them go off and play and then you can work on the hairband. Um, so I thought we'd decide whether, I guess what kind of an animal, I've already done a cat. We've already got, uh, we've got head, we've got bear and bunny ear mm. hair piece patterns in the shop. So I thought I'd try and do something a little bit different. I don't know, Mr. Stitches, like what kind of animal ears do you think I should try? Just sort of a typical well, I don't know. A bear? Have we done a, a bear? bear? I've got bear ears in the shop. Bear ears are really cute. You know what? I'm going to do bear ears. Bear ears are circular. It, we could put it to a vote, but bear? That's a great idea. we do have the cat tutorial. Let's do a poll. We can do, we'll, we'll say triangular ears, which are good for okay, cats triangular and dogs. Or old, or old triangular round or, I guess, um, what like deer and rabbits have kind of a tall triangle. How about ear. wolf ears? Wolf ears. Yep, those are triangles. Mm -hmm. So we'll okay. Let's 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 do a poll. We'll do we'll do triangular ears, short triangular ears, long triangular ears, or circle ears. Because circle ears are like monkeys and bears and who else has round ears? I guess a lot of animals have sort of rounded ears, and then. Cats, dogs, wolves, they kind of have short triangular ears. Deer, uh, rabbits, some dogs, they kind of have longer triangular ears. So yeah, we'll take it, we'll take a quick, a quick, uh, quick vote. In the meantime, I'm gonna pick a yarn color. So I've got brown, I've got gray, and I've got this sort of white color. Um White is typically the only white animal I can really think of is like, like there's the snow fox, the snow hare, the snowy rabbit. <laughs> there are people naming animals that don't have a lot of creativity. Well, it's white. I'm going to call it snow. Floppy dog ears. That was a suggestion. <laughs> um, so maybe brown. I'm going to go with brown. Brown is a nice safe color. So I've got some brown acrylic yarn here. 
and it's a size four. So I'm just going to use a five and a half millimeter or an eye or a nine hook. And um, I'm going to read out some membership miles sure. here. So first of all, I think this is a new member. I'd like to welcome Cassandra. Hello, Cassandra. Sue Alpaca. Thank you for joining. Welcome, welcome. Um, Kaylee, also, I believe, new member. Thank welcome you. to Alpaca. Let's drop my ball of yarn. Uh, Diane has been a member for 28 months. Fans are so fun. Thank says you, Diane. Diane. Yes, they are. Uh, Nana, 11 months. Hey, Hello, Nana. love from Southwest Florida after Hurricane Ian. Ooh. Yeah, hurricanes really did a number on, on the whole eastern seaboard had a, had this fall. Fiona was here. kind of mean to us, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sharon, another new member. Welcome to Alpaca. Hi, Sharon. Uh, Mandy's Doll Couture. Hey, Mandy. Mandy says, enjoying y'all from my bed recovering from surgery. Oh, well, glad you could make it. I'm glad you are well enough to, yeah. <laughs> to listen to us bore you back to sleep. <laughs> we got two from Diane. Uh, also, I believe a, a rejoin, oh, a re -welcome, welcome to Diane. Re-welcome. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I think I got... I think I got all of those you got everybody? milestones. Yeah. Great. Marvelous. Well, thank you, everyone. All right. Um, to make, make a basic foundation chain row for your ear warmer, regardless of who you're making it for, you start with a slip knot with your favorite hook, and you start chaining. And you can chain a length that just fits around your ears, over your back of your head, and meets snugly in the forehead. Or you can make it to match that circumference measurement that you took or are going to take. Um, the stitch count does not matter at all. You can be any number of chains. So this is why you can use any weight yarn and any size hook because the foundation chain count doesn't matter at all. You want to make note of how many chains you've used just so you have an idea of how many stitches you should have in every row going forward because it will be the same number. So the same number of chains you have will be the same number. I should say the number of chains you have will be the same for the number of stitches you have in every row. Um, you were mentioning that we have the bare ears sort of uh, headband yeah. in the shop. It's a head. It's not really a headband. It's like a. It's more like a. Um, like a costume. It's piece. more like a costume piece. So it sits up on the top and then ties with ribbons below, yeah. so it doesn't cover the so, ears. So um, we should also let everyone know that there's a little sale going. Well, yeah, yeah, and we're having a little goes, Halloween sale. Yeah, a little Halloween sale goes till uh, the thirty first. Yeah, and it's uh, buy three. Get fifteen percent off. Yes, I buy think. three, get fifteen percent off. Three yeah. or more. All right. So I've been chaining. I have no idea how many chains I have. I'll count them up later. But I put it over the back of my head. I wrap it over my ears, and I make sure I've got the the two. I've got my fingers on both chains, and they match over my head. It feels just a little tight. So I'm going to give it one more. And. I'm not even going to count. I'm just going to be absolutely wild today, and I'm not even going to count. I'm just going to assume that I'm going to, if you have trouble with foundation chains and um, missing stitches or multi-using multi stitches, count your chains. That way you'll know how many stitches you should have in your first row, and then you'll be off to a good start. But I'm just going to join with a slip stitch, so chain to make a big ring. And that's it. I'm going to make sure it fits. Yep, that fits. Fits over my ears, fits over the back of my head, and fits over my forehead. Rita says squirrel ears. Squirrel ears. They're, little, they're triangles. But they'd have to be really But they'd have small. little tufts in them. Little tufts. Yeah. Really tiny. I guess it depends on the squirrel, doesn't it? It depends on the squirrel. I, I feel like our North American red squirrel, our red squirrel has, has very not, tiny they're little... They're kind of rounded. They're, they're triangular. They're a little rounded, yeah. and they're not fluffy. But the red squirrel in, say, Europe has got super floofy, yeah, tuff, like, tufty ears. ears. <laughs> so cute. The black, the black ones, the, the large yeah. black ones, they're a bit of a triangle shape. They're more triangular. I don't think they're fluffy either. And the chipmunks don't have fluffy ears. We don't have, like, fluffy tufted ear animals. Well, they're fluffy. They're just not... Tough they don't have that, like, the fancy extra... rooster, uh, rooster fluff. The that, extra rooster Like some of the other squirrels. <laughs> okay. Once you've got your chained ring made, and it can be any number of chains, and if you have trouble with foundation or first pattern, first rows, count up all your foundation chains so you know how many stitches you should have in your first row. You can use the single crochet stitch, the half double crochet stitch, or the double crochet stitch. It's entirely up to you. If you're in a hurry, 
And it's like, I've got three headbands I have to make and I need them made for this weekend or I need them made for, you know, Monday. Then use the double crochet stitch because it's tall, it's faster. You only need maybe three rows if you're making them for a kid, maybe four rows for an adult of the double crochet. If you want to make it a little warmer, so this is something you're making for, for warmth, I would go with the half double crochet stitch or the single crochet stitch. I'm going to use the half double crochet stitch because I feel like in Canada, that's probably a good idea to err on the side of warm. So to start that row, if you're using double crochet, chain two or three to start and treat that as a double crochet stitch. So if you have loose tension, chain two. If you have tight tension, chain three. If you're using the half double crochet stitch or the single crochet stitch, just chain one to start and it will not count as a double crochet or I should say as a stitch. So if you're using double crochet, chain two or three and then double crochet into the next chain and all the chains around and treat that beginning chain stitch with two or three chains as a stitch. You would join the row in the top of that chain two or chain three. If you're using the half double crochet or the single crochet, you'll chain one and then you will crochet into the same stitch or the same chain that you chained out of. So you're not treating that chain one as a stitch. It's just sort of like to get you up to the right height. So I'm gonna chain one, half double crochet in the same stitch that I joined in. And then I'm gonna half double crochet in every single chain all the way around. I don't know how many stitches I have. I don't care. <laughs> I also know I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with my own, my own crochet technique that I won't miss any chains. Um, so I'm not really worried about about counting um, because the only reason that you want to make sure you're you've got the right number of the same number of stitches in every row is so that you don't end up with like a loose foundation chain row and a tight headband or the other way around you don't want to accidentally make your headband looser than your foundation chain was uh, so i'm just going to half double crochet in every chain all the way around and when you get to the end of the row if you're using single crochet or half double crochet you will join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet or half double crochet you made. But if you're using double crochet, remember that you're treating that chain two or chain three that you began the row with as a stitch. So you're joining with a slip stitch to the top of that instead. And if you need help uh, making a basic head headband ear warmer thing, we've got the uh, cat, ear, cat ears ear warmer tutorial. And you don't have to make the cat ears. They're made separately and sewn on afterwards but you can use that headband to use as a base for any animal ear, um, ear warmer for a costume. So it's, it's really, really simple. I think we use that. I don't remember if we use a single crochet or the half double crochet in that. We made that quite a while ago and I still have it somewhere. I'm not sure where, but, uh, but half double crochet is sort of a, I like that stitch because it's, it's halfway between a single crochet and a double crochet and it's kind of warm. It's a little on the snugger side and I feel like it makes a it makes for a nice kind of cozy ear warmer. So we have 112 votes so far. Okay. 114. Should we let it go another couple of minutes? Yeah, give it another few seconds, and then we will uh, figure out what kind of ears we're going to make. All right. I do like this. So make sure you place your vote in the poll. You should see it just above. Just above or just below the chat box? Mm -hmm. Little, it should be like a blue banner or blue box. Kim noticed that we're a little calmer than usual today. Oh, really? So I spilled the beans. Did you? The beans spillage is that we ran out of our good coffee. It's true. And we had to resort to tea and decaffeinate it. Drinking, in fact, so right now I'm drinking water. 32 how, cups later. How exciting is that? <laughs> we're still not at peak peak performance. Don't get me wrong. I love my Earl Grey tea. Absolutely love it. <laughs> but it, it's not quite the jet fuel that, that coffee is. So. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe we are a little calmer today. Well, that's nice to know. I don't mind being calm. I feel like I'm I'm very yeah, wound little, up most of the time. Sometimes I need a little calmness. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to spill the beans about what we were watching on the live stream before this. Oh no! I uh... <laughs> okay. Maybe we have some viewers we, from that area. We might. Who knows? Um, I one of my favorite things to watch on YouTube. And this is like what what do you call this? A guilty pleasure. 
I absolutely love watching drum lines. I love watching marching band stuff, but like the university level, um, I, I love, I love really good drill. I was an air cadet many, many years ago and I was on the, the drill squads and I was in the rifle squad and I did all of that drill. So I absolutely love that stuff. And I love to watch the young people still doing it. It makes me very happy and excited. I love cheerleading. I love, I love all that stuff. I love the dance troops. I just, I can't get enough of it. This, this stuff is great. I just love it. I love precision team work. Anyway, I watch a lot of this. So stuff gets sort of suggested in my, in my YouTube feed. And there was a live stream suggested. It's the Jackson State homecoming this weekend. And I sat and I watched the Jackson State. I was watching the Jackson State homecoming parade. And I'm like smiling and I'm bopping along my chair. And this dude just comes in and he goes, what are you doing? I thought you were going to get ready for the live stream. I'm like, I'm watching the live stream. I'm watching the Jackson State homecoming parade. <laughs> and then I got all excited and I think I'm going to watch the game later. <laughs> anyway, it was great. Wow, what a parade. It went on and on and on. And there were just like so many fans and dance troops and cheer squads. And it was just, it's just wonderful. I absolutely love it. I'm just, I get so happy and excited when I see young people still wanting to do that stuff. Looks good. It looks so good. Anyway, beautiful day for a parade. So that's what I was watching <laughs> before we started live streaming. Um, I've just finished my first row. I've joined with a slip stitch to the top of the first stitch I made. I now have a nice round band. You can sort of see that taking shape. Um, this is a half double crochet. It's a thinner size four weight yarn. I'd almost call this, this is sort of angling towards a size three lightweight. Um, so I'm probably going to need a few rows just to, just to make it cover my ears. Big know. shout out to uh, Sonic Boom. Yeah, the Sonic Boom, the Jackson State the band. band. The Sonic Boom, they're good, they're good. That was, <laughs> that was fun. Just, just, just doing anything in time with the person next to you is difficult. Now try to do it with an instrument, you know? <laughs> Impressed. Great name for a band too, I gotta say. <laughs> Um, we got some membership milestones and a super chat. A couple of super chats. Great. Well, thank you, guys. Let's hear them. All right. So um, this is from Kaylee. I believe Kaylee is one of our new members. Yes. I think you just shouted her out. Two pounds. Oh, thank you, Kaylee. Kaylee wow. says, idea for your ears. Why not pumpkins instead? Oh, that's cute. So a little pumpkin ears. I even have pumpkins made already. That would be cute. Two pumpkins instead of ears. Have you seen our new video, that's Kaylee? Really it's uh, the pumpkin hat. Yeah. I like that. That went up yesterday. Yeah. Um, let's see here. That's cute. I like that. Tracy. Tracy <laughs> has been a silk member for 28 months. Thank you, Tracy. Ear warmers aren't really needed here in South Alabama, but I'm working on my totally Tunisian square today. Very nice. Excellent. If you are in, that's actually a great thing that you brought up, Tracy. If you're in a warmer climate, you don't have to make an ear warmer. You can make a headband and you can make the headband a little wider and then make the ties so that it ties on. So it covers less of your head. So it doesn't cover the ears and you can make it out of cotton, which is cooling. We have um, a, a basic headband uh, or a hairband tutorial that you could totally use as the base. I've done that too. I've even got ears on one of my, my, my simple blue headbands. Um, it's just a few rows of single crochet just to cover the top and then um, chained uh, and slip stitch ties to make them a little sturdy and you can make the ties long to tie it on. And at that, you don't even need stitch counts or measurements because it'll fit anybody as long as you make the ties long enough that they can tie underneath their head. Then you can add the ears to that. So that's a cooler option. It doesn't have to be ear warmers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Tracy. I like that idea too uh, from Kaylee because you could also just kind of do any little shape. Yes, well, the pumpkins you are so cute. Pumpkins, you, you could know, do a couple Christmas of trees. You could use two of our little, little our little Amigurumi ghosts <laughs> little sitting ghosts. up there. Yeah, almost a, like a that's fascinating a great idea. I like that. Um, shout out to Kimberly, who's a channel member and sent a super sticker. Thank you, Kimberly. And it looks like the little fox is writing. Your number one Aww. on a note and showing it or painting your number one. That's really sweet. That <laughs> Thank is adorable. You. <laughs> Thank you. And Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. 34 months channel member. New emojis. Great fall holiday fun. Yes. 
see if you can um, see if you can pick out all the the recent can fall emojis. Lots of fall emojis. Yes. I will count them. Hopefully, I get it right this time. <laughs> we have one, two. Well, that's not. Well, yeah, it's kind of new. New and refresh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Seven new slash refreshed emojis. For those of you who are making one of these along with me, um, it's super basic. So when you join a row, chain one, and if you're using single crochet or half double crochet, crochet directly into the same stitch that you just chained out of, and then every stitch around, join with a slip stitch. If you're double crocheting, chain two or three, whichever you're using, and then double crochet into the next stitch and all the way around. So remember you're using those chains in that case as a double crochet. Um, it does not have to be beautiful or perfect. Remember when you get back around to the beginning, you're gonna skip the false stitch. The false stitch is that little thing that sits at the base of your chain. So whether you chained one or chained two or chained three, it's, it's what you see the chains coming out of. And we get a false stitch whenever we're working in the round and joining with a slip stitch, because the slip stitch is technically a stitch. Um, you don't want to use the false stitch in this case because it'll end up giving you extra stitches and you don't want extra stitches because it'll it'll make your ear warmer loosen as it as you go. So you don't want that. You want to <laughs> skip the false stitch. Jessica Rabbit. I think Jessica Rabbit guessed them all. Ms. Rabbit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, you got them. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> Jessica Rabbit got them first. All right, I think we can end that poll, Mr. and Stitches. Oh yeah, I forgot about the poll. <laughs> you got so busy with all the I'm busy all the other chat. All the chit chat. <laughs> um, okay, so while the poll is ending, I'm going to read out Joanna's hey. membership milestone. Um, Johanna says, watching and enjoying my pumpkin spice cappuccino. Ooh. Ooh, I hope it's heavily caffeinated. That sounds good. Way to rub it in. I'm literally drinking water. <laughs> water. Well, I, I've, yeah, got, I've got some more water boiling. Oh, are so you boiling water? So you have water? a choice between oh, thank a you. tea or a... A tea or a decaf? A special decaffeinated co coffee mix. A Mr. And Stitch is special. special. Oh, I might have yeah. to have one of those. That sounds there's good. a little bit of caffeine. Hmm. Actually, you're, there's probably more caffeine in the tea. Well, yeah, there's probably more <laughs> caffeine in the tea. It, either of them has more caffeine than the water I'm drinking right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we need caffeine chewing gum. I wonder what that would. I'm sure that exists. Although. Oh, I'm sure it does. I I don't know what that would taste like. There's like a billion caffeinated. I don't know. I I like to have my. I like to. I like to imbibe caffeine in a hot beverage. I, I, I tried some of those, you know, cold, like, you know, caffeine shot things. I tried a couple of, I think, what was it called? A, uh, it wasn't a Red Bull. It was like a, I don't know. I had some weird name like 20 years ago. And I thought, no, nope, no, nope, I don't like that. So I think I just, I'm going to stick to my coffee or my tea. <laughs> We don't drink a lot of pop either, so I don't. No, know. we don't drink a lot of pop. Or soda, if that's what you call it. Oh yeah, there's <laughs> the, the the pop and soda conversation yes. is already going. <laughs> we uh, here in Canada, we tend to say pop. We call it pop. Yeah. Once in a while, it's called we say soda pop, but it's usually pop. Or, you know, the name. Or of just the, brand, the name of the know, of the Coke, pop, Coke, yeah. Or, Coke. Uh, What's that one with all the fruity flavors? That's, that's crush. That's crush. Yeah. yeah. Orange well, crush. Typically, we say pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we say pop. And I, I wonder if that's because of the pop shop that was such a, a big brand back when we were kids. The pop shop. The pop shop. The um, you know those um, pop, those things that that explode in your mouth. <laughs> what what were those called? Pops. Something pops. Those candies that that crackle. Yeah, the. Um, we're, we're, you can still get it. Yeah, I like those things. Pop rocks, pop rocks. Pop rocks. Aha. Pop rocks. Yes, Granny Blue got it. <laughs> pop fizz. Maybe that's fizz. Another, that's another one. That's another brand. I think a fizz is one that you're you're sort of sucking on a candy and then it goes because oh, there's something yeah, the inside one, it. The, the big long strips. Yes. And then you get to the middle and it would like fizz and. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are good candies. Those are fun. 
candy should be fun. You know, I, I've always admired the Japanese candy because Japanese candies are like, they have all these crazy complicated different candies. Like, um, like they even have one that it comes in a, like a little toilet. And I don't, I don't understand why anybody would want to eat candy out of a toilet, but it's just endless cute gimmicks and like their candy almost seems like it's a toy and a candy and, and a joke all at the same time. I, I love watching uh, people unbox and, and try candy from Japan because that stuff's on another level. I feel like, I feel like we could really, we could really up our candy game here. <laughs> I'm just working on my fourth row here. And you know what? I'm going to finish this row and then I'm going to measure it to see how thick it's getting. This is about the thickness of a hairband at this point. So if I was just making a, a, um, a hairband to sort of fit on over my head, then I would probably stop at four rows of half double crochet. Um, but I'm going to make it a little wider because I want it to cover my ears to keep my ears warm. And it's probably maybe only a couple more rows. So... This is a very quick little project. Now, if I was using double crochet, I'd probably only need three or four rows of double crochet. So five or six rows of half double crochet, probably eight or nine rows of single crochet. Um, and that's for an adult. Obviously, if you're making them for a little kid's head, their ears are much smaller. So you may not need too many rows. Do but... you want to hear the uh, poll? Yes. Let's go for the poll. Okay. So the results are in. Uh -huh. And it looks like triangle ears triangle ears is the winner just regular so or we uh the, the triangle oval round triangle oval so round. what did you say triangle the little triangle animals so were? triangles would be cats um dogs uh even even owls wolves um any any and squirrels any animal that has like a, a little pointed sort of a, I, I guess i picture it as a sort of a shorter slightly pointed ear um, that would be kind of what i would consider a triangle hmm. so well that was the winner that was the winner okay 25 percent. all right yeah. so we're going with triangular triangular, triangular shaped ears. ears no problem and that's great so if you i'm gonna i'm gonna just sort of wing them today wing it uh but we do have a cat ear tutorial and you can use those that ear pattern in various colors to be different animals. And it will definitely give the feeling of what are the right. So for example, foxes have triangular ears, but you could make them black with a little bit of a white tip or maybe a little bit of a black tip and like white insides. That would very much look like, did I say brown? Orange, you wanna make like an orange handband with orange triangles with like a little bit of a black tip. You could just embroider some black um, yarn at the tips of the ears and then give them a white lining. I'll show you how to do a, a, a triangle inner, inner ear lining today. Um, and then that is no question, those would look like uh, fox ears. So you can use the same triangular pattern, but just change up the colors and maybe just, just add little color details or flex to kind of insinuate the animal that you're going for. Um, if I had a thought, I would have brought, brought down some orange and made myself Fox ears. I didn't even think of a fox, but there you go. Uh, I've got that orange because I, I made that pumpkin hat. I still have some of that orange um, left over. I, I might have to make myself some, some fox ears. That'd be cute. Okay, so here's four rows so far. You can see how thick that is on my hand. And it is four rows of half double crochet. It's a thinner, thinner yarn. It is one and three quarter inches or four and a half centimeters. So I'm definitely going to do a couple more rows. Let's see how this fits over my head so far. Would you like a hot drink? I would love a hot drink. You're going to have to give me a different mug. Though. I have one here. Do you? Oh, perfect. Yes. So which one? I think I'll take your special decaf coffee. Really? Yes. You yeah. want the Mr. and Stitches it's, special, I want the Mr. Right? and Stitches That one's special. more expensive. Is, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's always an expense with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know what? That does cover most of my ears, but I'm still going to make it a little wider. Yeah, that's, oh, and it's a nice, it's nice and spongy. Okay. I'm already pleased with this. All right. Four rows. I think I'm going to go five or six, five, six. Mm. You know what? This is the organic, the organic uh, build of a costume piece. Every yarn weight is different. Every hook size can change the outcome of a stitch. 
and every person's hand has its own signature. So this is why it's good to know how to just wing things or build things organically, because then you don't have to worry about following a specific pattern or stitch counts or any of those things that usually stress us out when we're trying to, to do a nice sort of crochet something, anything. And um, it's a costume piece. So as long as it's, it's as long as it gets across the idea and is comfortable to wear, it's a win. I hear crackling of, of packaging. Just just how special is this decap? No peeking. No peeking. <laughs> this is my special recipe. I see. So it's a secret recipe? It's secret and you can't peek. It's, <laughs> well, it's a good thing for you that I'm busy with my crochet over here. If you're just tuning in, thank you so much for joining us on a Saturday live stream. Uh, we're experimenting with uh, animal ear warmers today, so Halloween's coming. This is some fun, fun costuming ideas. I'm just using some stash yarn. It's a size three, four weight. It's brown. It's acrylic. Um, I'm using a five and a half millimeter or an I nine hook, and I'm just making a. I chained a length that fit around the back of my head, over my ears, and met snugly in my forehead. Um, doesn't matter what your stitch count is, as long as it fits snugly around your... Make, so you join with a slip stitch to make a ring. Try the ring on. That's probably the best way to know it'll fit, um, whether it's made for you or somebody else. And then just start crocheting. Stitch of choice. You can use double crochet, half double crochet, single crochet. You're just crocheting rounds. Uh, every The stitch count of every round will be the same as the stitch count of your foundation chain row, whatever that was, and it doesn't really matter, but... If all of your rows are the same stitch count, it will make for an even headband or ear warmer. Uh, so that's the only reason you want to know or keep track of your stitch count. Uh, unless you're like me and you kind of just assume that you're not going to skip or miss any stitches. Uh, so I didn't count at all. I still don't know how many stitches are in this thing. Don't care. <laughs> it looks even. It feels good when I put it on. That's all that matters. I'm skipping the false stitch every time I finish a row. I'm joining with a slip stitch to the first stitch that I made. And that's five rows. I'm going to go with five rows. I think that gonna, that's going to cover my ears pretty comfortably. Let's see here. Mm, mm, no, one more row. Got to make sure the tips of my ears don't get cold. It's all very well and good to think, oh, well, that's a nice, that's a nice size. Well, I'm sitting inside on a nice sunny day and it's not cold, but it's another thing entirely when you're outside at night and the wind is blowing and howling and if there's possibly the smell of snow in the air and it's pitch black, you want a nice warm ear warmer. <laughs> so one more row for me. I'm going to do six rows in total of half double crochet. Uh, I have no idea what my stitch count is, but I'm fairly certain it's the same in every row because my band is maintaining... Um, even the shape. And then we will start building some triangular ears. We do have a tutorial for cat a cat ears headband. You can use that pattern to make the basic ear warmer. You can use the cat ears to uh, make ears of any color. They can kind of lend themselves to a whole lot of different animals. So um, that's a good base pattern to use or tutorial if you're sort of working on a last minute animal costume. Um, in our shop, we have a, um, two patterns. One pattern is for a, a bare ears headpiece. So it's not a full headband, it's just a piece that sits up on top of your head and then ribbons tie underneath. And we have one for rabbit ears. And those two patterns use super bulky weight yarn. In fact, I used uh, blanket yarn for those patterns and they whipped up in a snap. And because blanket yarn is a, kind of on the stiff side, the, uh, the rabbit ears actually stand straight up. It's really cute. <laughs> um, that's another thing I wanted to say. If you're making costumes, you can get crazy with the kinds of yarns and textures that you use. You don't have to resort to using the same old nice stuff that you pull out for your other wearables, like your hats and shawls. Thank you, Mr. and Stitches. That you're looks, welcome. That looks very welcoming. Um, if, you're use, if you've got fluffy, furry yarn, use that. That is brilliant stuff for costuming. Uh, eyelash yarn, any of the yarn that's got like a wild, weird texture. You can break out the, the oddly spun stuff, the super bulky weight stuff. Um, if you want stiffness in an ear, then super bulky weight yarn with a smaller hook will give you very stiff, 
stitches and you probably don't have to put too many stitches in the earpiece itself just to kind of get the shape you're going for. Um, costuming is one of the most fun things to experiment with when crocheting because it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to give the idea or illusion of a specific animal or creature. So I've done just about finished my sixth row of half double crochet and that's it. That is going to be my headband. All right, so we have some membership milestones here. Great, I'm gonna finish this off. So this is from Shelly. Shelly has been a Vicuña member 48 months. Thank you, Shelly. I should be unpacking and organizing. Uh -huh. Did you just finish moving? <laughs> well, take a break. It was a long, stressful thing, I'm sure. <laughs> so put your feet up and relax for a little while. Uh, Dan Yell says, um, could do White Fox too. Could do a White also, Fox too. Also channel member. Yes, yes, White Fox. Uh, those would be slightly taller triangles, I think. Slightly taller. But I'll show you how to do that. And Donna. Um, big welcome to Donna. Hi, Donna. Thanks for joining. Yes. Welcome to the family. <laughs> Our crazy, cozy, creative little family. All right. I'm just weaving in my tail. Um, I did six rows in total of the half double crochet stitch. I will measure this for you in a minute. Once again, gauge doesn't matter. If uh, you know you do six rows of your chosen stitch and it's not tall enough, add another row. That's why this is such a great little base. There, base little headband, so simple. What did that take me, like 20 minutes? I don't know. Here I am chatting and talking. Uh, two and a half inches or six centimeters. So that is the width and it fits comfortably over my head. Remember that Crochet has a little bit of give to it. So if it's a snug foundation chain row, very likely it will be a nice, comfortable fit. And you can see that that fits over my ears, around the back of my head. Very comfy, very soft, I like it. Okay, so there's my base. That is my base headband made. Now we're gonna make some ears for it. <laughs> so fun. Uh, and we're gonna make triangle ears. I am first of all gonna try this special coffee. Does it need sugar? It's kind of watery. I feel like mine needs sugar. Well, it's instant decaf. What do you expect? I feel like when I make instant decaf, it doesn't taste as watery. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it needs sugar. Actually, it's, it's not. It's not bad. Another scoop of uh, decaf. No, because then I think that would make it too bitter. Actually, you know, I don't mind it. It's an acquired taste. Your right. palate isn't evolved yet. Well, my mouth is going, uh, where's the coffee, woman? That's what <laughs> Where's the coffee? It looks like coffee. It's, it's hot okay. like coffee. It's nice and hot. I will take it. I think it's good. Okay. It's better, than, uh, it's better than plain water. It is better than plain water. <laughs> the secret to making ears is, especially when you want them to stand up, is to make <laughs> a thick kind of fabric. So... We are going to make a triangular ear that is basically a cone. The wonderful thing about crochet is that when you make a three-dimensional shape, you have the option to stuff it and keep it 3D or squish it and make it 2D. So we are going to make a three-dimensional cone and then squish it to make a two-dimensional triangle. Very simple, much simpler than it sounds. Um, once again, we've got a pattern for cat ears. And if you want to give that a try in our tutorial, um, we'll make sure that's linked in all the usual spots when the, um, the stream finishes. I don't think we have that link handy, but Which it's um, the cat ear, the cat ear, ear warmer. I'll check, but I don't think it's handy. Um, so all we're gonna do is start, we're gonna make a little cone shape. Um, if you've made any amigurumi along with us, um, even our sunshine, some of the older uh, patterns we did, this will be very familiar to you, but it's not difficult. Um, you can start with a slip, stitch or a, sorry, a cinch circle. And if cinch circles give you a headache, then you can just chain three and make a ring. You want a very tiny start, very, very small little ring because you don't want to have a hole at the top. So once you've got your chained ring of three or your cinch circle, um, you're going to, I guess we're going to use a single crochet stitch because that will make everything a little bit tighter. We're going to 
single crochet six times into our little circle. So we're gonna make a rounded here. I've got quick access to the costume playlist. Oh, okay. That's and, probably in there. And the Halloween projects playlist. So I'll put those in the chat and then you can just um, excellent. You can sift through those sift videos through those, and yeah. find it. Once you've single crocheted six into your cinch circle or your chain ring, you're going to join with a slip stitch, cinch it up, cinch it up nice and tight. You'll have six single crochets in the round and it's gonna look like a little tiny dot. I'll hold it there, you can see it, just a little tiny dot. Um, you're gonna single crochet now without, um, we're gonna, we're gonna start going in the round. So I like to, sometimes I like to sort of complete that first row by joining and sometimes I like to just keep going in a spiral. Again, this isn't costume piece, doesn't matter. Um, I like, we've joined, so we're just gonna now continue with the round. So you're just going to single crochet into each stitch all the way around. It'll still be six. Uh, remember to skip the false stitch. If you come up against it, you wanna have just six, but to be perfectly honest, it doesn't matter all that much, even if you do accidentally use it. Single crochet in each of those six stitches all the way around. Keep rolling it down over top of your finger. It might feel a little tight, especially if you're using a much finer weight yarn. And it should fit over the cap of your finger like a little hat. So there it is on my hat, on my finger. Let me get that a little closer for you. So it just sort of sits on my finger <laughs> like a little hat. Now we're going to create a conical shape. So we're going to work two single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochet, one single crochet, all the way around. So two single crochet into the first stitch. And if you need a stitch marker to kind of keep track of your first stitch, that might be helpful. I've got a couple stitch markers here. Just put a stitch marker on the first stitch of the row. So that way you don't have to like worry about counting as much. You just have to sort of focus on the, the stitch pattern itself, which is two, one, two, one. I have a question from Kim, one of sure. our channel members. I see the cat ears and little paws mm -hmm. on Jada in the playlist. Yes. Is there also a size for a seven year old? It's basic, we tell you how to do it inside. So it's the, the only thing that changes is the size of the, the ear warmer. And we've been talking about that today. So all you do is chain a length that fits over the ears. If you don't have the head handy, um, and so you can't get the ear, uh, the circumference measurement, we have a head measurement chart on our website, on the tools page. And it's, it's called a head circumference or a, um, a head measurement chart. Head, head sizing chart. Head sizing chart. Yes. You want the circumference category and just find the age, the age category that you're, you're, the head that you're making it for fits into and follow it over to the circumference. And that's the general measurement of a head of around that age. And there, I mean, again, crochet is a bit stretchy, so it should work. Um, unless the child has an extra large head or an extra small head. Um, if they're a regular size seven year old, then that will, they'll fit into that generalized size category. And you just make the headband based off that size. So don't worry about the chain count. Don't worry about the stitch count. Every row will be the same number, but what you want is a foundation chain row that measures that circumference. And then off you go. And that's all you need to worry about insofar as the size, because the ears are the same no matter who you're making it for. So the ears don't need to change in size, it's just the headband. <laughs> um, I've linked the tools page, so that will send you directly there. And then you just, you might have to scroll down a little bit to find the head sizing chart. Yep. And you can open it up or you can also print it. You should be able to print it. I think you should be able to print it. You can right click on it and print it. Um, once you've finished two, one, two, one, two, one, all the way around, you'll be up to, what is that? like nine, 12, I don't know. I'm not actually bothering with stitch counts. All we're concerned about is that we're not doubling our stitches. We are creating a third more stitches. And a third is what creates the triangle as opposed to doubling, which creates kind of a flattening. You know what I mean? So we want a triangle. So we want a third more stitches, not a doubling of the stitches. Then for the next round, you're just gonna single crochet in each stitch all the way around. I've used my stitch marker once again to mark the first stitch of that row so that I don't have to worry about counting. Although I probably could count. Here I am going on and on about not bothering to count. How many stitches is this? 
I will count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So eleven or twelve. Eleven or twelve, that's what you should have. Okay, so I've got some membership milestones here. Marvelous. This is from Mickey. Mickey. Mickey has been a member for 22 months. Thank you, Mickey. Catching the live stream. Come on. Excellent. Live on a Saturday. Uh, Nani May is here. Hey, Nani May. Nani May has uh, a re welcome to Nani May. <laughs> re welcome. And a re welcome to Renee. Hey, Renee. And I believe this is a new member. A uh, big welcome to Mandy. Mandy. Hello, Mandy. Who has joined our Vicuña. Welcome. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome and thank you. Um, sometimes sometimes the system auto uh, runs these, so I'm not sure if someone's actually here posting or or it's kind of run through the system as a as like a, a renewal or a re-welcome. So um sometimes i can't tell but if you are there then uh, leave another comment <laughs> <laughs> all right at the end of the fourth row you'll have 10 11 12 stitches doesn't matter but you will have a nice little cap that sits over the top of your finger and if you squeeze it it will have a triangular shape a rounded triangular shape we're going to continue to third increase or increase by a third our stitch count so these, this stitch count for the new increased rows is row seven, two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next two stitches. I'm just gonna mark my first stitch with the stitch marker. I know where I am when I get back. And then we repeat two, one, one, two, one, one, two, and it looks like I can squeeze in one more one. Don't care about this not being perfect. I'm going for a triangle. Then we're just gonna single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. So we're not increasing on row eight. The real trick, the real trick is gonna be me duplicating this in a second year. And already, <laughs> I've got like, I guess you can see that there. I've got this cute little triangle kind of happening. And depending on <laughs> depending on how big you want your ears, like if you want just tiny little ears, you can start there or stop there. If you want larger triangle ears, you just keep going. Um, so to begin the, this would be row nine. This is another increase row. The increase pattern is two single crochet into the first stitch of the row, single crochet into each of the next three stitches. So the increase pattern kind of continues like that. So two, one, then two, one, one, then two, one, 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 then two, one, 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 and so on and so on, every increase row. And in between increase rows, you just single crochet in every stitch around, and that creates a nice little cone shape. So I'm just going to do that. It also doesn't matter how many stitches you start with. If you started with four, if you started with six, the same kind of mathematical increase pattern will give you the same shape. All right, so that's another row of increase. I'm gonna do a row of single crochet now all the way around. Stitch. I love using stitch markers. I don't often because I often am sort of working quietly on my own so I can count in my head. But using a stitch marker sort of relieves you of having to keep track of where you are or keep track of counting. So I always mark that. If I'm sort of hanging out with a group of people and I'm crocheting and I'm doing something that's stitch specific or count specific, I will mark the first stitch of the row with my stitch marker so that I can just focus on the actual pattern and not worry about counting. All right, we are getting quite... <laughs> Nani May has been... A subscriber slash member slash viewer for quite for a while many 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 years and says hey cuties it's great granny banani here <laughs> why didn't you kiddos tell me a youtube channel is such hard work no lol <laughs> yes they are they it are hard work a lot of hard work yes you have to think about it constantly constantly you're never not thinking about it yes it's, All right. It's easier to go to a nine to five job. Yes. 
it is. It is. This is another row of increase. I'm on row 11. So I'm doing two single crochet, single crochet into each of the next four stitches. And I'm just continuing to make a larger and larger triangle. So it depends on how big you want your triangles. It depends on how thick your yarn is, um, how big your stitches are. You can stop your triangle at any time if you think it's the right size. Just remember that you want to make the second one exactly the same as the first. And that's going to be what I'm going to do. So I think I'm going to, this will be a 12 row ear. I think I'm going to do row 12 is just straight single crochet all the way around. And that will be my little triangle. The other nice thing about making a three dimensional shape for your ear is that A, you can flatten it into a 2D shape so it will be stiffer, thicker, it'll stand up, which will help sort of really sell the idea of the costume. Or you can add a little stuffing. So if the ears you're making need to be a little poofier or a little thicker, like bear ears, you can add some stuffing to them because you're making a three dimensional shape. So a little bit of stuffing and that can be like extra yarn, whatever, also help make them stand up. That is 12 rows in total. That is a very nice little triangle. I think that is quite a good sized ear. Yes. And I'm going to, well, I work a few more single crochet. So I'm just gonna even up the bottom a little bit, work a few more single crochet. This doesn't change the stitch count, just kind of evens up the bottom. I do maybe six single crochet, slip stitch into the next stitch and leave a long tail because you're gonna sew the ear to the headband with this tail. So nice long tail for sewing. Again, final stitch count doesn't matter, absolutely not. All you're going for is the shape. The shape is what matters. So that triangle is now going to be curved a little bit. I know it's hard to see because it's brown, but so you see it sort of flat out, you're gonna take the edges and curl them in a little bit but we're gonna put an inner ear piece to it and that's totally gonna to sell it. I have to make a second one of these, so I'm gonna do that right now, see if I can do this. I started with a cinch circle. I started with six single crochet. All right, then I single crocheted in every single stitch all the way around. I joined my last ear on the first row. I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm just going to single crochet right into that first stitch and in each stitch all the way around because it doesn't matter. Going for an organic ear shape here. All right, that's all six. That little thing, oops, fits over the top of my finger. Ear hook. And now my little increase pattern. So first increase, two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet once into the next stitch. And then I do that twice more. Bring me up to nine, pitch. Yeah, from six to nine, then I'm gonna single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. This ear number one or ear number This is two? ear number two. Let's make sure that it's roughly the same. Yep, so far good. We got a membership milestone from Summer. Hey, Summer, thank you. Summer has been a Vicuña member for 43 months, wow. Summer says. I'm 100% supposed to be sewing pants. I know you are. But <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> LOL, I'm just drinking coffee and watching the live while I make a grocery list. I'm not procrastinating, I swear. <laughs> well, at least you're doing something productive. Hey, a grocery list is productive. Yes. That is definitely productive. Bethany, 44 months, channel member. Hi, Bethany. Bethany says, good morning. What are we making today? Not feeling well. Going, going to rest and crochet. So glad I can catch the lie. Uh, I'm so sorry to hear you're not feeling well. Mm -hmm. That's a bummer. Rest. 
and liquids. Yes, rest and liquids. It's um, we're making animal nutritious, ear rollers. Nutritious food. Yes. Rest and uh, and liquids. Yes. Uh, Water. We're making um, animal ears uh, on an ear warmer today. Um, I'm I'm starting to lose track of where I am. So I keep holding it up against my previous. Looking good. Yeah, it's looking good. I think I gotta add a few more stitches in here. <laughs> Nani May remembers our classic old joke back in the OG days. Nani says, Papa Papaya has not thrown his underwear in my baskets for years now. <laughs> LOL. LOL. Is that because you you pulled them out, threw them right back at them? <laughs> or they would disappear and you'd be like, hey, where did my underwear? Where's my go? pile of underwear? <laughs> Mary's impressed that you can crochet in the air. Oh really? Do yeah. you crochet in your lap? You know when it's small. If it's if it's something heavy or big, I work on my lap. Um, or actually, sometimes she does yoga moves and crochets at the same time. Most of the time, I stand when I crochet. I really should film that one day. <laughs> take a few photographs. I I, I a most couple of unflattering photographs. <laughs> Yeah, that wouldn't be too hard for you to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most of the time I stand. So I stand at the craft table and I put one foot for, I alternate between rows. So every other row, every row, I alternate feet. I put a foot up off on the chair or the table and I work off my knee um, because I sit a lot of the day and I feel like standing and alternating between legs and stretching a little bit while I'm doing some crochet probably helps <laughs> a little bit um, and it does feel kind of good so I, I do get used to kind of like working off my my knees but when it's something small like this I can I can, I can work in the air what would you say Jada and Stitches mm -hmm. what would you say is a good tip for someone who wants to get faster at crochet um let me see well practice I know nobody likes to hear that but it's it's repetition repetition of the same stitch maybe um, yeah, so getting comfortable, get comfortable, first of all. If you're not comfortable, physically comfortable when you're crocheting, then it's going to impact your ability <laughs> to, to work quickly. And I'm just working on a few. Sorry, more. I'm giggling because Nani May said she, <laughs> she sold the baskets. That's why, <laughs> that's why he's not throwing them in the baskets. So I, I pictured a giant pile where the baskets used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you're if you're uh, comfortable, that will help you go faster. If you are warmed up, that will help you go faster. And by warmed up, I mean like you've you know worked a few stitches, gotten comfortable with the hook in your hands. You're using a hook that's comfortable to your hand. I crochet a lot faster with an ergonomic hook than I do with one that isn't. So just a straight old hook without a, a grip. Um, I crochet faster when I'm warm. I crochet slower when I'm cold. I crochet faster when I've got really good music playing in the background. Um, I crochet faster when I've got a deadline. <laughs> mm. All of those things will help me crochet faster. And I think I did it. So I'm going to just work a few more stitches to even up the bottom of this ear. This one came together faster, but I wasn't really thinking about the stitches this time. Um, so practice physical comfort. That is you're comfortably sitting. You're comfortable where you've placed your yarn. You're comfortable where you've placed the work you're working on. You're comfortable with the hook in your hand. That's all very important. That's sort of that's step number one. Two, uh, warm up. You know, maybe do a little bit of exercise. I know that sounds crazy, but your whole body is one machine. It's not like your hands are somehow disconnected from the rest of your body. So, if you are physically warmed up, your blood will be moving through your body, and that will help move. That'll warm up your tendons. It'll warm up all your joints. It'll warm up your fingers. That will help you move a lot quicker because it's very difficult um, to do fine dextrous stuff when you're cold. Uh, a nice warm beverage that always goes down well. A little bit of music. I find if I've got like some some good music playing, then I will crochet a lot faster because I, I'm trying to kind of keep to the beat of the song. Um, and uh, a deadline. So if you and by deadline, I don't mean I have to have this thing done for this person. It could be I have 15 minutes today to crochet because, you know, my schedule is very busy. I want to get two rows complete 
or whatever your challenge is, your goal. Give yourself a little goal of a challenge and then set the timer and go for it. And that super focus on achieving that short-term goal will also help you speed up because you're motivated. Motivation is a great thing. All right, so that's two years. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Leaving long tails so I can sew them on. And eh, they're pretty much the same. I can just pull that one Close a little enough. bit. Close enough. So two little ears, you can probably see them better here. There we go, boom, boom, boom. two little triangles. Now we're gonna make an inner ear color. So the inside of an ear changes by the animal. Uh, sometimes the inside of an ear is kind of a pinky color because it's skin. Sometimes it's a lighter fur because there's tufts of fur there. Sometimes maybe it's white. So depending again on the animal you're trying to sell is the costume. Or if you're unsure, pull up Google images and just type in like fox or fawn or whatever the animal is and you'll nine times out of 10, get a nice you know headshot of that animal, like looking right at the camera, really study the ears. You know, is there a little bit of extra color up here? Is there like a little bit of extra fur here? Do they have something funny between their ears? You know, look for those little tiny color or shape details. And that's what you want to mimic in your headdress. And that will completely sell it. We have a this isn't bad. A chat here from Mary, one of our subscribers, longtime subscribers. I'm Hi, Mary. Sure. Mary says, Jane and Mr. And Stitches just love the new cowl pattern you put out a week or so ago. Thank Can't you. wait to give it a try. Yay, thank you. Yeah, we were pretty, pretty proud of that pretty one. Pretty pleased with that one, absolutely. I love, I love deep cowls that you can pull up over your head. Yeah. And that's, that's a one ball project. One ball project. One ball of scarfy. That's so nice. The brick stitch. Mm -hmm. Is it called the Brick Stitch Cowl? Mm -hmm. I don't have the direct link, but I do have a link to our channel homepage where you, it should be like It'll be a up front. second or third video on up top. Mm -hmm. if anyone would like to check it out. And another little sort of detail about that pattern, that Brick Stitch Cowl can be worked any number of rows, any number. So if you've got loose tension or tight tension and you need more or fewer um, rows repeated to get, say, to here or to get up to here, you just do the number of rows that you need and you can end on any row. It doesn't have to be a row one or a row two. It doesn't, it doesn't matter for this pattern. So you can just keep going. I went until I didn't have enough yarn to do a final row. That's basically how many rows. I think that worked out to 36 rows for me, which was perfect because it sits all nicely sort of like right here on my chest and over my shoulders. It comes up and right over my head and I can turn it back into a cuff to kind of, kind of frame my face nice and warm, real cozy. Um, so that worked out well. That was 36 rows for me. And I think I was using, was I using my seven millimeter for that? I think so. Seven millimeter hook. That hook in that, um, that pattern is, uh, I think I used the seven millimeter in that one. I also used the seven millimeter in the uh, pumpkin hat tutorial that just went up yesterday. A lot of people ask about that hook. It's a Knit Picks Rainbow Wood. And we even did a review on a set a of rainbow set of woods. Them. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, they're in stores around here, so I don't know where you would find them online, but it's Knit Picks specifically. They're the ones that make it. Uh, and they're so pretty and they're really smooth. So yeah. if I'm going to use a hook that doesn't have an ergonomic grip to it, I'll use one of those. Those are really nice. <laughs> um, one of our channel members, Kimberly, asks, is there a trick to keeping the chain from turning? Um, yeah, so this is something you get better with over time when you're you'll also get to know like, oh, my chain is twisted, like you can tell just by looking at it. But when you're still getting used to, to that or sort of get, you're still new to kind of working long chains, I find it helpful to chain your length, put it down on your work table and and make sure that it's untwisted. And the the daisy chain part of it. So that the two the two loops that sit opposite each other, not the bottom one, should all be facing upright, and it should it should lay pretty nice and flat on your your work surface. Then making sure that it's not twisted, you can join it. And the same thing, you might want to work right on the surface as you work your first row, so that if you're in the air like this, you might find that it wants to twist on you. I know what it looks like if it's twisting, and I I run it between my thumb and forefinger. I know the feeling that it should feel like of those two loops smoothly going over my thumb. My thumb tells me that that's, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with the front or the top 
of the foundation chain. But if you're still not sure about how that feels or looks, or you're not used to that yet, then keeping it flat on your surface and not lifting up. So, you know, work those first, that first row might feel cumbersome because you're sort of bumping your hook into the work surface, but work that first row nice and slow all the way around. You won't twist the, um, you won't twist it. By the time you get to the end, just make sure that it's like the top of the stitches you're going to join to. And it's pretty obvious. Like you don't want to twist it. You want to make sure that it's the top part is where you're joining. But if you've been working flat on the board, I find that helps a lot when you're still getting used to that. So that's the only real trick to it. Um, other than that, you will get used to the way it looks and the way it's supposed to feel. Because I mean, I did all that too. When I was first starting out, I was like, I don't know what I'm using here. I've got the back of a chain staring me in the face. When did this twist? <laughs> So I started by working on a, a surface until I got so used to knowing how it was supposed to look and feel that I could do it in the air. But even, even today with some of the longer chain lengths, if I'm working on a blanket and I'm starting with a really long chain, I'll lay it down on the floor. I'll, I'll stick it to the carpet. You know, you can kind of pat it to the carpet and I'll work off the carpet so that it doesn't want to twist on me. All right, inner ear time. I'm going to make a smaller triangle to stitch to the inside of my ear. I'm not making a three-dimensional shape. I'm just going to make an actual triangle. Um, so depending on the size of your ear, you can kind of make this like you would a leaf. It's like half, half the size, it's half of a, of a leaf shape. What I mean by that is, this is, how tall is this? If I was to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, so it's like 12 rows. My ears are about 12 rows tall. I don't want my inner ear to be as tall as my ear, outer ear. So I want to start with a chained length that's shorter. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to chain it and hold it up against the inside of my ear to see if it's how long it is. Cause I am using a slightly textured yarn for my inner ear, I've got a pink here. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So there's five chains. Now, if I hold this at the bottom, you'll see that it goes right up to the top. So the length of my chain is also the length from the bottom to the top of my ear. That's too tall, but I do need a turning chain. So I'm gonna stick with five chains and I'm going to skip the first chain from the hook single crochet into the next chain, half double crochet into the next chain, and double crochet into the last two chains. And this will create a bit of a triangular shape. So, see that right there? It's a little bit of a triangular shape. I'll show it to you here. So that is a very basic little inner ear piece. It's like a little tiny triangle that mimics the inside of the ear. That's good enough if you're making, say, cat ears. If you want them to be bigger, um, you can single crochet all the way up and then down the other side. That will make it wider. Um, and if you need them taller, because you made taller ears, and of course you can just keep making your triangles taller and taller. If you don't want them to be any more cone-like, you can just keep single crocheting in every round and that will just give them a little bit more base. Then you just start with a longer foundation chain for your triangle, your inner ear. And then you would do a single crochet, single crochet, a half double crochet, half double crochet, a double crochet, double crochet, a couple of trebles, whatever you need. Remembering that slip, single, half, double, treble goes up in a nice little incline, right? So slip, single, half, double, treble. That's what you're gonna get. If this is your foundation chain row, that's what you're gonna get with this, with, with making your stitches taller and taller and taller. You can also use extended stitches. That's not something we talk about much here on the channel, but an extended stitch is basically like you start a double crochet and then you chain one before you finish the double crochet. You start a, a treble crochet and you chain one before you finish the treble crochet. You can also chain multiple chains before you finish the stitch and get all sorts of neat shapes. Those are extended stitches, but for simplicity's sake, slip, single, half, double, treble, or slip, slip, single, single, half, half, double, double, treble, treble, however many stitches you need in order to fill that foundation chain that will fit inside that inner ear. 
I'm just going to use a little small triangle. Same thing, I'm snipping a long tail because I'm going to stitch it to the inside. Where's my little needle gone? Needle, hello. There you are. I've got this little tiny tail dangling down. I'm just gonna weave that in on the back just to get it out of the way. Everyone's discussing how we're so much calmer, quieter, <laughs> uncaffeinated. <laughs> All right. It's not entirely true. We do have some caffeine. We do have some caffeine. But it's just not the regular dose. So there's my inner ear. You can sort of see, I'm going to try and get my fingers out of the way. Here. Oh, yeah. There's like my it. ear, my inner ear, my little inner ear. I'm going to basically sew it with my yarn needle and that long tail so that it sits in the very middle of the ear. And I'm just gonna sew in and out through that front part of the outer ear piece. This is another nice reason to make your outer ear a two-sided piece because you've got, you can sew through to the inside, right? And uh, the sewing can be an absolute mess. It doesn't matter because it's not gonna show. So I'm just... <laughs> Bethany says, we love you with or without coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that, that I, I, uh, I, I, like, I didn't realize that I, well, I can't talk. So maybe that's my first sign. <laughs> <laughs> you need caffeine just to speak. I need clearly. caffeine la, to speak. La, 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 la. Um, I'm just sewing in and out and in and out around the edge of this little inner ear piece, as you can sort of see. Again, we've got a tutorial on how to make these ears. Uh, so if you need to check that out, we'll make sure that it's linked in all the usual spots once this stream is finished. But there's no real like, there's no real rule to this, which is probably one of the reasons I enjoy making them. <laughs> I am going to uh, fasten off this string. So my little sewing string, I'm gonna bring it through to the inside of my ear. I'm gonna make a little knot and then I'm not gonna trim or weave this in. I'm just gonna stuff it in like stuffing because I don't mind my ear having a little bit of stuffing. It'll also just help make it stand up. One of our subscribers, Carla says, I just finished my 30th falling leap little stocking. Woo! 30? Made, made a couple that look like work socks. Thanks. <laughs> those must look really those cute. Those must be cute. Little, little gray socks. ones. Yeah. I love those little stockings. Me they too. turned out so good. So there's my ear. Ta-da! Hey, it matches your sweater. It matches my sweater. So now I'm going to repeat nice. that for the other ear. With that fabulous haircut. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you have to you have to like do this so it it it, it swoops out of it. What this mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. Aha! There you go. <laughs> A little flick. A little flick. <sighs> For me, my inner ear is is a chain five. Skip the first stitch. Single half double double. Oh, that's it. Single half double double. A very very simple little triangular shape. Snip a string for sewing. Weave snip that short tail in. Snip, snip a roo. Okay. Then I'm going to. I like to flatten my earpiece too, so that the the sewing string is exactly on one side. So as opposed to flattening it. So that it's in the back, like the middle back. You want to flatten it so that it's out to the side. And then just pick whichever side you like is the front.
And I'm not doing anything fancy with the sewing. I'm just sewing back and forth through the front piece of the fabric. So you can sort of see that like I'm, this is the inside and I'm sewing in and out through that front piece of the ear, taking care to not go through the back piece of the ear. Again, our <clears throat> tutorial shows this in better, uh, much better. This is such a funny yarn. This is a very weird textured yarn. It's good yeah, for yeah. Kind of grabby. Yeah, it's it's, it's like it's grabby. It's it all like it's grabby. It's all bubbly and grabby, but it's it's a really nifty kind of ripply texture. So it, it's kind of good for making like crimp, like crimp. It's crimped. Great word. Thank you. Crimped hair. I don't know this now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, crimped like hair. I knot the yarn on the inside. Don't bother trimming. No weaving in. I'm just going to shove it in there to be stuffing. <laughs> and that's ear number two. So there are my two ears. Nice. Hey, hey perfect. You can clip them to your hair. Mm -hmm. I could, but I have a hairband. So I'm going to sew them to the hairband. Now, Things about ears, you can sort of bend them, twist them. Um, some, some ears look very triangular. Some ears look like the bottoms are kind of turned in a little bit because that helps the animal kind of catch sound and like sort of like it, they grab the sound and it stays in the ear. So you might want to like turn the bottom corners of your triangle in a little bit when you're sewing it down. Um, you can pinch the bottoms together. Some ears like, I'm going to hold that for you. If you pinch the bottom ear, the, the bottom parts together, it becomes kind of a bunny ear or, or almost like a little bit of a dog ear. So you can play with the shape after you've made it and before you, you stitch it to your um, headband. You kind of want to put the headband on. Decide where you want your ears. So let's see, where's my headband? Here it is. I don't know. Mm, the front, Put it back middle. on my head. Yeah. To the side. I can't tell what I'm doing. Can you? Oh, because it's the opposite. Yeah, it's the opposite for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want them to sort of sit up. Depends. I'm going to get my headband on a bit better. So if I want my headband to sort of sit like this, I'm also going to take my hair out the back. So there sits up on top of my head, get the ear, and then, then decide where you want your ears on your headband, whereabouts, sort of like towards the middle, maybe more to the side. Like if you're making kind of like a little monkey or an animal that has their ears kind of out the side, then you want to like, you know, think about putting them out to the side. Then you can sort of gradually put them, like some animals have them right up on top of their head, like a rabbit. Other animals have them a little bit more to the side. Um, I would grab a couple of stitch markers and like mark out basically equidistant where you want to put your two ears. I'm really winging this because I don't really know how it looks, but that feels that feels about right. That way you know where to put them because it, your ear warmer looks a lot different when it's off and flat in front of you. All right, so sip of coffee for courage. <laughs> You're doing great. You want to make sure you sew your ears on the same row of your hair warmer or ear warmer. It doesn't matter whether it's like the, the middle row or one slightly to the back. It doesn't matter. But they want to be um, on the same row. So for me, I think I'm going to do that across. I have six rows. I'm going to do it across the third row, the fourth row, somewhere in the middle. I'm going to slightly twist my ears in. I'm trying to decide if I think that looks kind of cuter. I don't know. Does it look kind of... If I pinch the tops, they look like a little... If you see you what I'm doing? I'm pinching the pinching the bottom together. Yeah. Does that look kind of... Let's see. Like if I pinch the bottom, does that look a little bit a more... Like, like a deer. A bit more like a deer? A deer... Ha Deers have pinched ears. Yeah. I think it looks good either way. We can run a poll if you like. Pinched or non-pinched? Pinched or non-pinched. Yeah, let's run a poll. Pinched or non-pinched. While right. you're doing that, I'm going to go grab another one of the ear warmers. I will prepare the poll for everyone. 
And we'll let everyone vote on the triangle ears. Let's see here. Start a poll. <laughs> Pinch on pinched ears. So the non-pinched would be more triangular. And the pole should be up any second now. A little bit pinched, says Carla. Joanna says a little bit pinched. Rita likes the ears. <laughs> yep, the pole's up. Um, should be at the top or bottom of your chat box. You just tap on it or click on it if you're on a PC. So we have a membership milestone here from Linda. Linda has been a Silk member for 44 months. Thank you, Linda. And Linda says, loved the pumpkin hat you made on Friday. That is awesome. I will let Jada know as soon as she comes back. I love my pumpkin hat too. I heard you. So Linda, one of our channel members, loves the pumpkin hat that came out Friday. Thank you, Linda. I love that too. It's so cute. I was wearing it today, but then I was like, I'm going to be making a headband. So I'm going to be pulling it on and off. <laughs> so the poll's running. And okay. We currently have 34 votes. I just thought I would sort of take a break to show everybody another little um, headband ear warmer thing that I did uh, for my little fawn costume several years ago. Um, I did this one as a, a headband. So I crocheted just, a, just enough that it would cover the top of my head and then made ties. I crocheted little tiny antlers. <laughs> Yes. And then sewed them on, and then I made ears, big floppy ears for my 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 fawn out of just um, felt, and those are glue gunned. I pinched the bottoms together, so you can sort of see that I pinched the bottoms together, and I sewed them on sideways so that they hang kind of on either side, and this is sort of how it looks. Mm -hmm. So I would tie that on, and then I have these nice big floppy ears kind of staying to the side. And my little, my little antlers would sit up top. So, and I think this probably took me all of like an hour to make. So it's, but it sells the idea. And of course I would do a little bit of face makeup and it looked like a really good fawn costume. And that's the whole fun thing about uh, a headpiece, an ear warmer or a headband that's slightly decorated. And the nice thing about crocheting, the base, so making your headband out of crochet as opposed to using one of those hard plastic ones, is that this will stay on your head a little bit better. You can tie it on or you can make it like this one to sort of fit snugly over your head and over your ears, especially if it's gonna be outside during the cold weather. And then you've got, I should say, more useful space to work on. You can sew things to your crochet, you can glue them to your crochet, you can use needle and thread like I did with my, my big ears here. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to, I can see the stitching at the bottom of my ears, but it doesn't matter because no one's coming <laughs> up to your costume and like looking for little tiny details. Like, oh, I see a stitch there. That doesn't look like it should be out of tight. It's, well, what is this? You know, the Met? Like, I'm not, <laughs> this is not Broadway, you know, <laughs> this is Halloween. And this is, this definitely looks like a little, a little, a little deer headdress to me. So I love these big ears. I still pull that one out there as well. So that is another way you can do your, your headband. That's also acrylic, but if you're in a warmer place, you might want to go with cotton because cotton breathes a little bit better and won't be as hot. I think we have an intro of our calendar blanket. From 2016. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. If you look at the... October update. So would it be October? Yeah. October update video uh, for the temperature blanket series. Um, I think there's a bunch of photographs of Jada with the, um, that headband and your makeup on. Yes. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yes. I think I'm wearing my little costume. Yeah. 
Um, I'm going to just pinch the bottom of one. So for all the poles running, I'm going to pinch the bottom of one just so you can sort of see what it looks like pinched compared to one that's not pinched. So we've got a pinched ear. I'll get even closer here. A pinched ear and a not pinched ear. So just the triangle. Now the triangle, I can curl the edges in a little bit, but that's what the pinched ear looks like. And that looks kind of more like a bit of a dog ear to me, as be, besides a cat ear. A cat ear is more kind of like kind of like this, where it's just kind of turned in a little tiny bit. Or a bunny. If that was really, really tall, that would make more of a bunny looking ear. Also, when you pinch the bottom together, the two bottom edges, you get this nice round kind of base for the ear. Makes it very sturdy. So when you sew that on or even glue it on, it'll stand right up. I don't know if this is happening to anyone else in the chat, but I'll type out um, a response to someone, put in an emoji, and it and it posts the emoji and deletes the entire the entire response, <laughs> like my entire text. Can you? It's, it's can, funny. Can you can you write something without an emoji and have it go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if I don't put like, see the little smiley face. So if I don't put that, it it'll. Oh, it'll plug. But if I do, it'll it'll show the emoji and delete the whole sentence. So I don't know if anyone else is uh, noticing anything funny like that in the chat. But it seems to only be for um, the YouTube emojis, not huh. our custom emojis. That's interesting. All right, uh, we'll give the poll a few more minutes, and oh, then yeah. we'll decide on pinched or not pinched. Sixty votes. So another uh, another thirty seconds another 30 for the seconds. poll, everyone. Well, and we will, the rest of my coffee. We will end it. And now a sip of water. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so we got a super chat from Plant Mix. Plant Mix. Um, I did respond earlier in the chat, but. Um, Plant Mix sent us five, is that Australian dollars and an A? I don't know. I'm going to guess Australia. <laughs> Let me know. Um, it's anyway, spring there. Thank you for that. Thank and you. Plant Mix says, I love the look of that hat. It looks amazing. By the way, is the Granny Square game coming back to the channel? It will be. It will be. Yes, we, we are have full intention to bring the Granny Square game back. Yes, we we have some uh, new ideas we want to try with it, but um, it's we're still working out some bugs. So <laughs> <laughs> that is coming back, though. Yes, absolutely coming back. Mm -hmm. We're just not we're not sure exactly when, but for sure coming back. Yes. Um, yes, and thank you so much for the super chat. So we are at 66 votes. All right. Well, you can end it. I want to get to my little ears. So right. what are we at? So it looks like pinched wins by a decent margin. Pinched wins. All right. So I will pinch the bottoms, the two bottom pieces of the ears together so that it, it looks sits curled. And then I will sew them onto my ear warmer. And that's basically all you do is you... Take that long string that's sort of you left for sewing, put up your yarn needle, and pinch the two ends together, and just basically sew, sew through the two ends. So I've got my needle going to the opposite end, and then I'm going to take it through the end where the yarn comes out of, and boom, done, pinched. So you can do that a couple times just to make sure it's not going anywhere. And then sew them down to your ear warmer. So I'm going to do that just twice. And I'll do the same thing over here to this one. <laughs> it looks like I have a squirrel on my end. You have a, you have a squirrel? Yeah. Well, Because um, everyone else, it seems to be working fine. All right, so where I marked uh, with my stitch markers is where I'm going to put each of my ears. And that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my stitch marker off. I'm going to plunk my ear in that same spot. And then I'm just going to 
sew it down. Um, there's no fine science to this. I just want to make sure that I sew all the way around the bottom edge of the ear and I'm sewing it um, firmly to the middle row of my ear warmer. Since these are... And... Get that, it's just that first stitch that's hard to get. And because the ears and the ear warmer are all one color, your stitching doesn't have to be sensational. It's not going to show. Sewing on pinched ears is actually a lot easier than sewing on flat ears because you've got sort of more of a three-dimensional base to work with. I'm just sewing around the base of the ear. Nothing fancy. There, and of course, you can see that it stands straight up. So when that sits on my head, that little ear is gonna sit straight up and down, or at least straight, straight away from my head. Um, so that is on nice, and I'll give that one more little stitch. Pick the yarn through to the inside of the ear warmer, knot it on the inside, and you can weave it in or trim it, whatever you like. That's one, and now the other one. I'm just gonna make sure that I still like the spacing, so. <laughs> so there we go, and then. I like it pinched. Yeah, it's pin It's cute when it's pinched. Now, does do it I look even? Still like the Everyone spacing. Does that, does that look even? Oh, I see, you're doing it on the other side of the. Now, I, well, I don't know. See, that's where I originally had it. But that I doesn't feel look like right. See if I well. If well, I, yeah. I guess if you twist. Okay. I'm working backwards. Put it in front. Put it in front of your clip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Then you just line up the other ear to match where the 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 twin is sitting along the headband, and then you sew it kind of. To the same area, so the same. Make sure it's facing the right way. Make sure its front stitches are sort of stitched onto the same row that the other one is. And that first stitch is always the trickiest. And like I said, we've got a tutorial on how to make. Um, Sort of the basic ears and ear warmer and we'll make sure that's linked in all the usual places after the live stream just so if you want to go back and sort of like see it see it see an actual tutorial for it versus me just sort of talking about what i do as i do it uh, we've got that for you i to make sure that it is still facing forward yep Kim says she's getting a subscriber mode only banner after every few posts. So we do we do have the stream set for subscribers and um, members only. Um, I don't I don't see why you should be getting a, a banner every few posts though. Yeah, that's funny. That, that's that's a kind of a weird thing on I think that's on YouTube's end. I think it sounds like there's some squirrels in the chat. Yeah, today. because you're having you some issues. Like if you're subscribed, you shouldn't be getting a you know that banner. Maybe someone who isn't. Um, you could double check to make sure that you are subscribed because sometimes there's glitches that unsubscribe people randomly. And or logged in. I know it's easy to Oh yeah, being logged in. Um, I can see that. Kim's a channel member. All right, so she's logged in. 
but um, double check to make sure you're subscribed because maybe maybe that's it's either that or a funny glitch on uh, YouTube's side. All right, here we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like it. Matches your sweater. <laughs> yep. Yep. Definitely cute. Okay, so <laughs> those are really cute. <laughs> they look really like cute little ears. I'm uh I'm wearing ears. All right, so now this this is I guess these could be the base for several different animals. If you were going to add horns or antlers or something, you know, you would either put the horns or the antlers on, on either to the inside or the outside of the ears, depending on what, if you Google the face of that animal, what it looks like. Uh, antlers are really simple. You can just, um, like the ones I made here, I just started single crocheting a stovepipe. So I started with a chained ring of eight, I think, joined. And then single crocheted and every stitch around and around and around. So every row had eight stitches in it. And that made like a little stove pipe. And then I finished it off at the top. Um, or you can make it the opposite way. Start with a, a, a cinch circle. Start with four. <laughs> double that to eight. Make, make a thing. And then just make a smaller version of that and sew it to the edge of it. Kind of like making a little cactus. We have a cactus tutorial. So if you need to see that sort of a little more, make a little more sense. That's basically it. So it's, you're basically making a little... Uh, cylinder and then sticking a slightly smaller one onto the side and of course you can stuff it you can bend them you know you can get a real cute little like antler look going those are just really cute little baby antlers but they they give the idea um to make horns let's say you wanted to make little tiny horns um you could use red or white depending on the kind of you know animal or creature or monster you were going for and it's the same thing you want to make a cone. You want to start very, very small at the top, maybe four single crochet into a ring or a, a cinch circle, and then like do another row of four and then do the third. So two, one, two, one, then a row of single crochet, two, one, one, two, one, one, row of single crochet, two, one, and actually that would be two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, row of single crochet, then two, one, 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 two, one, 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 etc. So what you're doing is basically just creating a cone with a very pointed top. When you go to sew it on, you can add a little bit of stuffing if you want, but you want to pinch. You want to like take the end and pinch it and just pull it. Pinch and pull and pinch and pull so that your, your horns kind of like bend in and pinch a little bit more. And you can be kind of rough with your crochet. You don't, you know, if you crochet a shape, you're not just left with it, how it, how it finished when you crocheted it. It's, it's akin to blocking. You're going to pinch the top, you're shaping it. You're giving it a little more shape as you go. If you need a shape to stay, you can use thread and needle and thread and like work some stay stitches to like get a piece to sort of tack down to another piece so it stays in a particular shape. You can stretch it out. You can cinch it in. You can do, um, you can put wires in things like pipe cleaners that will help kind of give a little bit of shape or bending. It's costume building, it's not clothing. So remember that it's not something that is gonna be worn every day, it's something that's gonna be worn once in a while, presumably, I mean, you know, unless you're a little bit odd like me and you would wear airs out in public. <laughs> but this is quite comfortable, this is a comfortable little ear warmer. Um, and that's how you can just kind of keep adding to a headdress. If you wanna add like fake, fake um, feathers or something, you can sort of glue some feathers in and around it, uh, but, the most important thing is the ear warmer or the little hairband that fits, fits comfortably. And then you can just start building on top of it. Um, there's probably between these two ears. So just for reference, if my head circumference is 22 inches. My two ears are, how big are these? With the bottoms pinched together, they're about an inch wide at the base. They're about two and a half inches tall. And the space between them on the headband is two and a half inches. So not a very wide space. When you're looking at a headband flat, it looks like that looks almost like that they would be too close together. But remember that this has got to go around your whole head. So there's only two and a half inches between my two ears. And I think they sit up nice and they sit nicely on top of my head. For a child that might be even a little bit smaller, 
Um, so it, it does help to sort of put the headband on, make the ears, make the pieces, and then sort of decide where you want them. And that's where like your 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 little stitches, uh, stitch markers come in handy. You can kind of mark where you want those things to sit. So there, I like it. I like my little. Excellent. Little, keep them. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to read out one more chat here. Okay. Oh, two more. Two more. Have a membership milestone. So this is from Mary, one of our channel members, says, Thank you, Jada. I just love you. <laughs> Never in my life did I think I would be able to do some of the amazing things I've done because of you. Much love from Blissfield, Michigan, USA. Michigan. Thank you so much, Mary. And Teresa sent us a membership milestone, says, Thank you the tutorial. Hey, Teresa. Well, you're welcome. This was more of a, a chat and a, and a live demonstration than a tutorial. Uh, but we do have a tutorial for making the basic headband and for making the pair of basic triangular ears, which you have seen today, you can sort of turn into different shapes. Um, we also have patterns in our uh, Etsy shop. We've got the pattern for the ear, uh, the cat ears. We have a tutorial for the cat ears and the matching uh, fingerless gloves with the paws. Um, in our Etsy shop, we have patterns for, we actually have a pattern set for the cat ear headband, the uh, paws, and also a tail, a crochet tail is very easy to make. Um, that's a, a fun little bundle. We've got patterns for uh, just a plain, like the, the head piece, so not an ear warmer, but like just the top part that would sit on top of your head that you can tie on with ribbons for bare ears and, um, bunny ears, and we use a burnout blanket yarn in those two projects. So those are extra quick, extra soft and plush, and they're nice and stiff. They really, they, they're kind of cartoony. They're big, and they sit out sort of outside of your head and up on top of your, your head, depending on where you place them. Uh, very easy patterns. So if you need a last minute animal costume, <laughs> then I recommend, I recommend starting at the top and working your way down because it's uh, it's you can sell the idea with a set of ears and maybe a little bit of face paint. Um, and uh, if you're really trying to go for a specific animal, then Google that animal and look look at the color. Look if there's some kind of specific coloring. Like I said, with the with the fox, you might do the triangular ears, but put it like an orange, but put a little black up top. Just stitch some on with your yarn uh, and your your yarn needle. And then maybe like a little white inner ear piece on an orange headband, and that would sell it as a fox headband, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things. So just changing the color can really kind of change the idea of the animal. I love fiddling around with costumes uh, and costume stuff. And the simpler, the better. You want to just, it's like, it's like if, if you ever speak to anybody who's a cartoonist, they talk about as few lines as possible. When you're making like a, a cartoon or something, you want to use as few lines as possible. The same concept goes for costume making. You want to use as, as, as few lines as possible. You don't want to make it extra complicated. You just sort of want to zoom in on those very specific details that make, make you think, oh, yeah, cat has pointed ears. Oh, yeah, fox is orange and has a big bushy tail. It's those very specific details that make you think of that animal, and that's what you want to focus on when you're working on the costume. Um, yeah, I hope you guys had fun making this along with us. It's been sort of a... A chill Saturday here at the In Stitches house. Um, and Halloween is coming up soon. You wouldn't know it to look outside. It's a beautiful, gorgeous, sunny day today, but um, um, the cold is coming. Lori Armstrong says, Rebel Crochet Day didn't count, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. Don't know the stitch count. Don't yeah, count. yeah, well, it, it works, it fits. It See, works. it does. It worked out. Mm -hmm. This is actually a very comfortable yeah, little headband. That's great. If I pull my hair out, yeah, then you can't even see it. Ha ha. Mm. So I guess we'll Cat, wrap it up yeah, then. Yeah, we will. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Uh, we hope if you didn't catch our pumpkin hat tutorial on Friday, uh, we'll make sure that's linked somewhere around here too. So be on the lookout for that. That's a super fast little little hat. Also on theme, so if you want to look like you're in the spirit but don't quite want to dress up as a monster or an animal or something, why not look like a pumpkin? Uh, that's a fast, fun, simple <laughs> tutorial. You can make it for anybody. That went up Friday. Uh, we'll put links to our other costume stuff um, in and around the links in the description box, the comment section. And uh, we hope you guys have a great weekend. Take care. Uh, if you're popping into our shop at all, we're having a three or more sale for Halloween. It's on from now until Halloween. So if you uh, want to pick up a handful of 
patterns, then um, you get 15% off if you get three or more uh, from now until Halloween. So thanks so much for supporting us there and have a great weekend. Have a great week. We'll see you next Friday. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. <laughs>